first and foremost, I want to congratulate the governor, uh, Governor Holcomb. I think he did a very nice job in his first state of the state, and you can only imagine uh, what a daunting task that would be to come out on your first uh, try and to give your state of the state. And I think the governor did a nice job. I have to congratulate him on a job well done in terms of the delivery of a speech. You know, he laid out his uh, five uh, pillars, as he calls them, and I mean, certainly what we heard was a speech which uh, spoke very much in terms of broad uh, strokes. It was very hard, of course, to disagree with any one of the pillars that he talks about. All those are things that we want to accomplish, and certainly uh, we stand ready to help him to accomplish those goals. What we didn't really hear uh, that much of uh, were details. We did not hear specifics in terms of how to go about each one of these uh, pillars and uh, that's something the governor he's I understand he's he's new on the job he's feeling his way and he's he's going to have to uh, come out with those details as this session goes on you know I think first and foremost uh, on everyone's mind is this infrastructure crisis that we need to address in the state of Indiana uh, we didn't hear him say uh, specifically that he backs the uh, Republican majority's plan to raise uh, the gas tax or to enact tolls or to increase the fees when every Hoosier goes to the BMV and at some point in time he's going to have to say whether or not he he supports those uh, particular tax increases and I think also I would say that uh, when that time comes uh, and it's going to have to come uh, we should really also continue a discussion about fairness and equity in our tax system in the state of Indiana. Uh, as I pointed out, uh, when uh, the Republicans unveiled their uh, plans to raise uh, those taxes, there are still tax breaks that are being rolled out and given to corporations and businesses, and I think it's not unreasonable to continue the discussion as to how fair is it to ask ordinary Hoosiers to raise higher, t uh, to pay higher taxes at the pump or at the BMV or when they get on a toll road. But at the same time, we're continuing to enact even deeper tax cuts for businesses and corporations. But, you know, we didn't hear that this evening. We'll perhaps uh, continue to hear that. A couple other things that I wish the governor had talked about. Another pillar we ought to talk about is how do we fir uh, firmly move Indiana into this century? How do we modernize Indiana? How do we repair the damage that was done several years ago when we had the RIFRA debacle? Didn't hear any discussion about uh, adding additional protections for the LGBT community in our Civil Rights Act. I didn't hear about enacting a hate crime. We ought to uh, finally not be one of the uh, five states in the United States without a hate crime. We should do that. We should bring Indiana uh, into the modern era. Uh, I, I, I certainly do uh, applaud the governor in terms of this idea of efficiency in government and government modernization. You know, part of that should be election reforms, too. We did not hear him say that he backs a redistricting reform. That is crucial for restoring the uh, confidence of people in the way that we draw legislative lines. And I know that's a legislative matter, but the governor, again, needs to lead on these issues. So, again, I think the governor overall, uh, Leader Pilat, did a nice job. I look forward to working with you and the other leaders to help him in reaching these goals. Uh, uh, but I'll turn it over to you to hear your thoughts on the governor's uh, first uh, uh, State of the State speech. Thanks, Senator Lannon. Uh, good evening, everybody. I strive to listen to every incoming governor with a purely open mind. In this case, it was rather easy to do. Uh, we have a new chief executive who has never made a public decision and never taken a vote on the public record. It is a clean slate, and that is a somewhat uh, liberating place to be that uh, provides some new opportunities. Uh, the five pillars which he highlighted are very difficult to dif disagree with. We all share the goals of um, improving wages and growing jobs here in Indiana. We all want to see a first-rate system of infrastructure. We all want to develop our workforce for the future. Uh, we all want to make government work better and we all want to break the uh, cycle of dependence of drug addiction. It's how you fill in the holes. It's the uh, subscript. It's what comes underneath that is the area of debate. Uh, I have to say he did a pretty credible job for the first time out there. There are plenty of things 
uh, that I found appealing. Um, there are things that I would like to see implemented, particularly in the area of uh, uh, intervening in drug addiction and to consolidating Indiana's uh, system of growing new workers. There are clear areas of bipartisan agreement. Um, however, and it is the elephant in the room, I was looking to hear one thing in particular, and I did not hear it. And that was, I embrace the House Republican tax increase plan. Um, that wasn't there. He talked about a menu of options. Um, that's probably good from the Democratic point of view because we have some options that we would like to put on that menu. And I hope he's open to uh, expanding um, what uh, will appear on the table in front of him. But he did not use the tax word. He talked about revenue shrinking, the need to in, in, invest um, in our roads and bridges and in our railways, which is a good thing. I've said all along, uh, if you're going to propose tax increases, you need a chief executive to go sell that plan. And it appears to me that he is not willing to do that. He is doing what others uh, who have come to before him have done at time. He is going to send the Republican uh, members of the General Assembly across the minefield, um, see which of them, <laughs> see 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 which of them takes some shrapnel, and then make the evaluation from there. Uh, he's clearly going to leave the heavy lifting to uh, to Speaker Bosba and others in the General Assembly to make the case. Um, that's probably going to be more difficult for them to do from. The legislative chamber because it's really only the governor who possesses the bully pulpit to make a statewide case that is his decision uh, and if he's going to take that route um, governing being an art and not a science multiple right and wrong answers to every particular problem uh, if he's going to if he's going to embrace that that method of leading then i hope he will open uh, be open to some other ways to solving the problem of our infrastructures and possibly the combination of some different ideas. Uh, the only thing I ask in return, I listen uh, with an open mind. I hope you will listen to some of our ideas with an open mind because there are solutions to these problems. Uh, Senator Lannon, yeah, I'm ready to take some yeah, questions. Yeah, absolutely. Questions? On the gas tax, Senator, you, you hit on this a little bit. Uh, Representative, do, uh, do you guys back this idea of raising the gas tax? Will you support it or will you lobby against it? Well, a couple of varying points. One, the public has not vetted this plan yet. This is not that complicated. The proposal's been made. Um, we will offer an alternative that has a different way of providing the same amount of revenue which is based on basically canceling some future uh, or delaying some future cuts uh, in other areas of taxation. Uh, we hope that will be heard and possibly there's some uh, middle ground to be found in conjunction with the public. Uh, I don't think that the citizens of Indiana have been able to fully understand and grasp what has been articulated by the House and Senate Republicans. Uh, I have an open mind about all of these things. Uh, I think, however, that if we're going to ask for sacrifices, those sacrifices have to be shared and they have to be broad. And they can't merely be sacrifices for the unconnected. Um, the connected also have to uh, take part in building our roads and bridges and railways because everyone will benefit equally. Um, not just. Uh, people who are struggling to get to work, right. but but people who sit in boardrooms too and, and earn profits based on a better infrastructure. You know, all I'm asking for is there to be an honest uh, debate and discussion about how fair is it to continue to roll out uh, tax breaks, which have not been given yet. No one's talking about raising taxes on corporations or businesses. It's just a um, some sort of a halt, a temporary halt, while we're in this environment of asking everybody else to pay more at the pump, pay more at the BMV, perhaps pay more at the toll road or whatever we're looking at. It's just now's the time to have a discussion about fairness and taxes. As long as we're going to have an honest discussion on that, everything's debatable for sure. Uh, Governor Holcomb talked about different ways to address the drug crisis, including notably counties doing their own needle exchanges without the state um, and giving the go ahead and the new uh, drug czar Jim McClelland. Do you think that what the governor is 
posing so far is enough. Right, yeah. Well, I think I, I I applaud the governor on what he's what he's trying to do there. Uh, uh, coming from one of the counties which did uh, have a needle exchange, I know the process they had to go through. I, I think uh, the needle exchange program has proven that it can be beneficial. So I think that what he's doing there is just fine. I think that is. Uh, something which we should work together with the governor on. It, it is time. There's more that needs to be done because it's more than just needle exchanges. And Scott, you probably have more first-hand knowledge right. about this than I do, but I understand resources have to be put into us really getting serious about this. But it is I, something we need to tackle. I, I was happy to hear him talk about treatment um, in addition to you know the, the usual yarns of uh, punishment. Um, that's extraordinarily important. And I was glad to hear him talk about the issue pragmatically. That is a great leap yes. forward uh, from his predecessor, who was reluctant to s speak of such things at all. Uh, it's a tough business governing. Uh, you have to deal with uh, issues that none of us enjoy discussing, and I. It'll t it'll take uh, the the normal public deliberation to get the policy right, but I did note that he was willing to discuss it, and right. that 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 makes a difference. That's right. Speaking of his predecessor, how would you rate his performance versus that of Governor Pence's in his four years here? Well, he was beneath the clouds when he spoke, so so th th that that was a change. I think there's a difference in style there that I'm detecting, and I, you know I hope uh, what I, I did detect in the governor's. Uh, comments tonight is I, I think some practicality I think he wants to be pragmatic uh, deal with the real issues that are out there uh, you know I, I so in that regards I think uh, it's it's welcome uh, I one one thing I did did miss uh, a little bit of a disappointment uh, early when we talk about moving Indiana into the future we our caucuses believe strongly in early childhood education and I know there's this talk about doubling the the uh, the funding for that well come on we're talking a 31 billion dollar type of a budget here we're going to go from whatever uh, 10 million to 20 million or uh, what have you we really should be tripling or quadrupling the amount of funding for early childhood education because i don't know about you leader pilath but i know plenty of areas in the state of indiana in my district both counties they're ready they're primed for early childhood education they've been working on this on a grassroots basis the state needs to to meet those efforts and uh we need to really be bold in, in regards to that and so a uh, little bit of uh, disappointment in terms of what i what i detect as just a very incremental approach to rolling out early childhood education it's time for indiana to invest big time in that was it a speech you expected to hear when he started to run uh, where he's, he's not talking about LGBT religious freedom, he's not talking about abortion, instead he's talking about jobs, education, and raising taxes for roads. Is that what you envisioned when he started to run for the position? Well, you're not sure exactly what you thought until you bring it home. But whoever advised him to stay away from those issues probably gave him good advice. Uh, the state needs a break from all those things that divide us along moral, spiritual, ethical, philosophical lines, particularly given the economic problems that often ensue uh, when you make that the top of your priorities. So he, he was uh, smart to stay away from them. Whether he will continue to do so uh, is going to be entirely contingent upon his own constitution. Uh, because he's going to have he's going to have uh, a number of members uh, want to believe that this is the time to do everything they ever dreamed on social issues, and he's he's the one that can back them off. I don't know if he can. No, I wasn't at all surprised with the tone of his speech or the content of his speech. It was almost uh, hundred percent of what I expected he would say. Why do you think there is this reluctance on investing more heavily in pre-K? I know that you know we've heard a lot about sort of our budget, you know, constraints, that sort of thing. Um, it just seemed like the tone was a little bit different on this. What, you mean his reluctance on investing in pre-K? I'm sorry. Um, yes. 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 What's his reluctance? <laughs> well, clearly that's an area of timidity. I'm going to paraphrase uh, Representative Jim Lucas. Um, friend, you know, fr friend of many of ours, uh, he has interesting points of view. He happened to talk about how 
kids are spending more and more of their time with government. <laughs> I noticed this trend back with Mitch Daniels when he first described public schools as government schools. <laughs> uh, some on the far extreme right have continued to paint common sense things like pre-K as more government indoctrination. Uh, when there's that sort of silly rhetoric floating around and you have to placate it <laughs> because it's coming from within your own ranks, uh, it, it's probably restraining him from being able to make broad-based common sense decisions on our kids getting off to a good start. The problem he, he, he's sort of uh, conflating a little bit with this this geographic specific doubling down on pre-k mm -hmm. so it's feeding into a, a conception not just that certain favored classes and interests are getting good treatment but certain geographical areas are getting favored treatment that's an overarching problem that's bubbling out there in the four corners of the state that he's going to have to address at some point and the way he the way he's dealing with pre-k is only going to reinforce some of those perceptions and it's not a political one it's a regional one it, it, that's that's not helping you know I, what I'd encourage the governor to do on pre-k is get out into the state go to the areas where there are grassroots efforts to enact uh, pre-k and he'll sense the enthusiasm and excitement over enacting those programs and and also we'll see the benefits that have already occurred in those communities that have done what they can to enact pre-k it's the future of, the, of our state and we need to get invested in it